there's three main components really that are truly part of the, some of the changes that we made this past year. The first is a one-to-one -one mentorship program. So each sixth grade student in our house area is assigned a mentor at the beginning of the year and that mentor then meets with students throughout the year. Um, usually we try to say 10 minutes per week um, that we meet with them and that the mentors consist of house teachers as well as, the, as those of us that are outside of the house. So I had some students that I mentored. Mike had some students that he mentored. So it was really an all hands on deck approach for the mentoring. Another component is the real world projects. So it's a project based learning model that students are working through and the emphasis on those projects is interdisciplinary learning as well as a focus on cognitive skills. So really addressing the skills of learning through those projects. And then the third piece is individual pathways. So this is where a lot of that personalized learning piece comes in, is learners are goal setting. Um, they're working through some of the focus area pieces, which is the more content driven part. Um, some of that at their own pace. And then um, really truly they're there's other opportunities for them also within projects to work at different levels. So there's different levels of scaffolding, which are called mild, medium, and spicy. So that's another part of the personalized piece. And then the platform, how the platform works for this is it supports all of these pieces. And really truly for us as teachers is it's a area where we would communicate back and forth with students and give feedback. Um, it's also where students access. So, so we have up there projects and focus areas. And I mentioned that piece of their project pieces live in the platform. And actually it's a nice organization um, for our sixth grade students because everything lives there. So as teachers, we don't have to have them turn anything in. We can go in and check to see where they are at any given point to support. Um, so that's one of the platform pieces as well. One of the shifts is the homework itself changed then because the the platform um, allows some choice that Andy talked about and the focus areas are the content learning that support the projects but the completion of the focus areas is very much driven by the students and you guys can tell more about that. So my students had um, a variety of focus areas for math that um, went along with the projects that we were doing in class. So if, for example, we were talking about coordinate geometry in class as a project, um, they would be working on a focus area that revolved around coordinate, um, the coordinate grid, for example. So they would be working on the skill independently at their own pace and choosing different resources to look at to help with their learning in that area. And then in class, we would be reinforcing that. Um, I would be doing some lessons on the same ideas, but probably not spending as much time as I had in the past on teaching um, the lesson of how do you plot a three comma two, big plot that point. Um, the students were doing a lot of that independent learning on the focus area at the same time that I would teach a mini lesson about it, but then be able to advance and go deeper with that idea. And um, I really saw a lot of growth with my students in taking the ownership of their work um, and taking homework, if you will, seriously. Their homework wasn't me saying, you need to go home tonight and you need to do these 10 problems and bring it back tomorrow. They were, um, and that was true across the board for every class. They were told to go home and work on what they needed to work on and they had to make some choices in that area. So they may have chosen to work on the math that day, but also a little bit of literacy. They may choose the next day to work on social studies and a little bit of literacy, but they were ready to go ahead with the math and um, maybe they had done that at school and not needed to do that at home that night. And they then chose which resources they needed based on their need. Not every kid did the same resources. They would go into the platform, look what was available to them and make a decision based on what they needed and go through a resource. Um, and for math, they would maybe be doing some problems to see if they um, did understand the concept or maybe watching a video to help them learn what they were going to need to know to then do the practice. Um, and then uh, once they had gotten through their resources and felt like they did understand that information, they would take um, an assessment to see if they indeed did get all of it that they they knew. And the, the nice part about that piece, um, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, is that that 
homework piece was um, assessed in a, an assessment, but I also assessed it on my own during my project time. So I was getting two pieces of data from my students about whether or not they understood and learned a concept, which was a bit different than in the past. Um, usually there was just a final test at the end, and I still had a final written test at the end, but I had this piece of the skill work that they needed to know before they took the test as well. So those two pieces gave us more information than we had had in the past. And their homework then was really for these kiddos, um, not just a task that I told them to do, but something that they owned and they needed to do to understand what was going on in class as well as this assessment they were going to do on their own. Um, so I saw more kids participating in doing the homework and definitely um, using it as a tool to learn instead of a checklist of something Mrs. Henry said I have to do um, and she said to do these. Um, they were really owning that piece. I'm going to jump in here. Just, they take that content assessment. There's usually more than one learning target. There's like two or three learning targets. And after they take that content assessment, they get a report and, and it actually tells them which learning target do they still need to work on. And so before they can take it again, because they do have to pass it finally, so before they take it again, they know what objective to go in to learn. They don't have to go back and try to learn everything. It just says, hey, you, you just need to know about this one thing. They go back, pick some resources out, and then they retake this. And we look, okay, you did the work, and now you think you got the you know, objective number two, you don't understand it, yeah, and we take it. So it really, it really tells, not every kid had to do the same thing to retake a content assembly. It was based on what the child did the first time around, which I thought was kind of neat for the kids. And some kids will come up, yeah, hey, Mr. Kreitz, I didn't pass this one, but I need to know this, and I'm going to do these three resources. They're, they're already thinking in their head what they have to do to, you know, pass, it, to pass it. And so that's just something that I saw for the first time, kids actually thinking about what they have to do to pass this content. Or when they ask us questions, it's not, I didn't pass a test. It's, I didn't pass this objective. Their, their questions are much more pointed than they were in the past because they can narrow down the, their weakness. Right? And to jump, uh, piggyback off what Courtney was talking about, so in literacy, one of our uh, focus areas was theme. And so part of the choice, the personalization, early in the school year, um, we were working on uh, stories and storyboards, and I was talking a lot about theme. The project. The project. The project. So the project in class, we were talking about theme. In the timeline, it was down the road a little bit. And so a student said to me, hey, we're talking about theme. Can I do that now? Well, of course. So because we were talking about it, she wanted to learn more about it. So she jumped and did that. Traditionally, that would never be a possibility, right? They, she'd have to wait for me to turn the page to get to that theme <coughs> here, where she chose. She was investing, like, I need to learn this. So that's what she was studying during her personalized learning time. One of the things that I really took away from my students this year when it came to the homework was the time management piece that they they learned, um, which is a life skill. And um, they had to make decisions. They had you know, a couple weeks to get some of these focus areas done and they had to choose. Okay, I have soccer tonight, so that means you know, maybe I need to work on social studies and this is the resource I need, or I'm gonna work on math because I just can't think of social studies and read those passages, but I can do the math because it's a little bit more black and white or whatever. Um, but my daughter came home and she's 28 and you know, we were, I was on the um, computer and she was asking me about, well, what is Summit? Can you tell me a little bit more about it? And I was just like, oh, I was just checking because there's a due date and the blue line moves and the kids get choice and they're, and I was explaining what these people were just explaining about it. And she was like, that's genius. I wish I would have had that as an 11 and 12 year old because I spent the first two years of college trying to figure out time management because all my teachers were giving me things to do at the same time and I was working and trying to figure that all out. And she's like, those kids are so darn lucky that they have this opportunity now in their life and don't have to wait until they're 18 to kind of figure that out. And I said, well, that's funny because we always had assignments that they had like weeks out. And she goes, yeah, but it's different when it's every night you have to make that decision and you have to figure out like, okay, I know I have this commitment for work or I have this going on. And she said, that was a lot of my tears my first couple of years in college. And she's like, these kids are just so lucky. And I was like, yeah, they kind of are, aren't they? 